Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric. And we're going to be doing another game from the 1978 Stratomatic replay featuring the Boston Red Sox season. Um, we are currently on game number. We'll look this up here. Uh, this will be on game number. Just finished a two game series with Kansas. Here it is. Game number 30. Uh, we start a two-game set with Baltimore. It looks like it was originally a three-game set, I think, but I think one of the the May 12th game got rained out or something. Um, this is a game from May 10th of 1978, and we're just approximately. I was watching L Red Sox fan. He's doing a 1978 season featuring Digital Diamond Baseball, so check that series out too. Um, great channel, great stream, great uh, live um, games. As he, as he records them. Um, so we are currently game 30, and he just finished, I believe it was game 35, against uh, the second game against Kansas City Royals. So, so as of this recording, we are not counting this recording, we are six behind him. So after this one, we'll be five behind him, assuming he hasn't done any yet today. So we're gonna try to catch up to him, and then um, at the end of May, hopefully, uh, into the May schedule here, um, we're gonna do a possible YouTube, I mean not YouTube, but a uh, Google Hangout um, video and compare our stats uh, for the Red Sox for each of our teams. See how well, you know, record as well as individual stats, as well as team stats, uh, maybe some stats from other teams, records from other teams, stuff like that. So, should prove to be fun. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna try to You'll probably be seeing a lot more videos at least re uh, the next week or so um, for Stratomatic, and then we'll, maybe we'll, what we'll do is we'll try to work out a schedule where we each play the same game, kind of see how it uh, see how it works out. So on, on, on each of our channels, so that might be kind of cool to, to check out a game featuring Stratomatic and a game featuring uh, Digital Dungeon Baseball and see how they compare uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So that that should be fun. L, L mentioned it. Uh, last night, so I thought that was pretty cool. And Mr. Brody was all up for that too. Mr. Brody's all into like doing Google Hangout and he'll he'll be he'll participate in it too. So we need his input there. So alright. Um, we also go back into playing a little action PC golf and I'm probably gonna do a tournament um, with Payne Stewart and Greg Norman again as the last one I did he Ended up uh, winning the tournament. So I mean, uh, Payne Stewart did. So we're going to start a new tournament with both those golfers. And I purchased a course from Dave um, from Action PC Golf. Um, it was East Honolulu or something like that that I needed for the next tournament, the second round. So we got that last night. So all right. So without further ado, let's get this series underway because that's what you tuned in here for. So it'll be Baltimore. I mean, the Red Sox visiting. Baltimore at Memorial Stadium. It's a lousy night for baseball, as it says here. And it'll be Alan Ripley. It's always an adventure. Going up against Mike Flanagan. So let's get the game underway. Alright, for some, some reason it loaded Yankee Stadium again. Occasionally it will do that. I noticed that when we played Cleveland, I think in Cleveland it loaded the Yankee Stadium. Um, 
it was Mr. Utah Mike that said it might be something to do with my file there. Um, it's missing in my file. But anyway, I'm going to try to reload it real quick. Actually, no, I'm not going to because I don't want to mess up the, uh, the bad night and everything like that to keep the weather conditions and everything. I want to keep them as they were intended to be in the replay. So just disregard the Yankee Stadium in the background. It's supposed to be Memorial Stadium. It plays with the dimensions of Memorial Stadium, as you can see to the right uh, corner of the field here, right bottom corner. Uh, not many singles. Oops. Not many singles, not many uh, home runs either, all the way around. It's just a one to two. I guess I keep doing that. <laughs> Sorry about that. A little advertising there to pay for our broadcast. <laughs> So, all right, so Mr. Brody's in his co-host seat there, getting ready. Just went for his walk, so he's all set. Ready to chill and watch some baseball and comment on some baseball. So Mike Flanagan is on the mound for the or for the O's. Comes in with a record of 3-3. Three and three. He would be a 19-game winner on the season. 4.07 ERA, which is right along with his ERA of 4.04. 49 innings pitch, 45 hits, so again, right on. 20 walks, which is a little high, um, and 24 strikeouts, five home runs allowed. So all right, so he'll take the mound for the Orioles, and against the Red Sox lineup, which is looking at it right here, is pretty familiar. And again, I see something I like. I see Butch Hobson at DH, so that's a good thing. And this time we get, although this time we have Frank Duffy at third base instead of Jack Brohammer. So, all right, so the Red Sox lineup is as follows. With Burleson, the shortstop, will lead it off at bat first. Jerry Remy, the second baseman, bat second. Jim Rice is the left fielder today, batting third. Cleanup hitter is Kyle Yastrzemski, the first baseman. Behind the plate is Carlin Fisk, the catcher. Batting sixth, the red-hot Fred Lynn. He hit um, Grand Slam in the last game against Kansas City and, and uh, homered in the game before that. He had five RBIs yesterday, so he's been on a tear recently. Which hops and DH will bat sixth, which is where he should be. I mean, bat seventh. Anytime he's not in the field is a good thing. Dwight Evans, the right fielder, will bat eighth. And playing third base today is Frank Duffy, the third baseman. It's not as much of an upgrade as um, Jack Brohammer, as far at least arrow wise, but definitely better upgrade than uh, better range than uh, Hobson. So all right, so let's get the game underway. Rick Burleson comes into the game hitting 331 with a homer and 14 runs batted in. Sensei looks in for the sign from Dempsey. And let's, let's go over the Oriole fielders before we start. It'll be Singleton, Bumry, and Harlow. Left to right. Singleton is an average fielder. Aver I mean, average range. Bumry is below average range. And Harlow is above average range and right. Uh, each one of them is won't commit that many errors, but a few. In the infield, very good. Doug DeSensei is the third baseman, is above average. Belanger is excellent. Range at shortstop. Not much of a hitter, but excellent uh, defensively. Smith is above average at second base, and Murray is average range at, third, at first base. Murray is the best fielder of, of them as far as errors go. He's only been E5, whereas Belanger will commit a few more errors, but he is playing a tougher position at shortstop, so E14. And since he's E13. And Smith is the same as Remy at E12. I believe Remy is E12 or 13. And that and behind the plate is Rick Dempsey, who is a above average and has an uh, range and above average arm. Commit a few errors, but not that many. And on the mound. Flanagan is average fielder with committing a few errors. Alright, so that is your Oriole de defense. And Burleson comes in again. 330 on with a homer and 14 runs batted in. So he's still lined up by Flanagan in the pitch. And the of Burleson's three column. And it's a strikeout. So he's frozen on that one, so a call third strike. So it'll be Jerry Remy. Also off to a good start, he, although he's been kind of slumping a little bit lately. Uh, average down to 317, 
was up in the 330s for a little bit. So 317 with uh, no home runs and 12 runs batted in. See what he can do here with the one out and nobody on. It's three calm. It's going to be a fly ball to Harlow. He'll make the catch for the second out. So two up and two down for the Red Sox. Brings up the MVP of 1978, Jim Rice. He's been on a tear recently. Uh, average wise, he's up his average from 315 to 328. So he's hitting 328 with five homers and 20 runs batted in. And it's going to be off of Dempsey's five column. It's going to be a pop up to short, pulling his under, and makes the catch. So that'll do it for the Red Sox. They go in order in the first. So we head to the bottom of the first, and the Red Sox are going to have Alan Ripley on the mound. He's been struggling, although he has a winning record of 2-1. But his ERA is 9.78, 37 hits allowed in 19 innings, almost two hits per inning, five walks and 12 strikeouts. You don't expect him to go too far in this game. And the Oriole lineup is as follows. Al Brumby, the center fielder, bats first. Billy Smith, the second baseman, will bat second. Larry Harlow is the right fielder, batting third. Batting cleanup is the left fielder, Ken Singleton. Fifth, the Hall of Famer, Eddie Murray, at first base, Lee May. Is the DH today batting sixth? Doug DeSensi is the third baseman, will bat seventh. Yeah, on the plate, Rick Dempsey, the catcher. And uh, at short, batting ninth is light hitting Mark Belanger. So Burmy comes to the box, to the plate, hitting 337 with five homers and 13 runs batted in. So off to a good start, only hit 237 in the actual year. So 100 points better than his average. And this is where you want to be with. Ripley as the sixth column. And it's a ground ball to third. Frank Duffy is going to get his first chance here. He's an E. He's a three E twenty. Average range and a little bit above average, a little bit below average for error wise. So he made a few errors, but definitely a lot better than Hobson. And looks like he's going to make the play. Scoops it up over to first. Dempsey will handle it for the first out. So let's check out the Red Sox defense. Sponsored by Mr. Brody. <laughs> he came off successful contract negotiations with YouTube yesterday. So he's very satisfied with that. So you'll be seeing him in a lot more promotions and everything. Check If you haven't seen it yet, check out his game he played yesterday on our channel. It's called... Turbo Pug. Could be playing other variations of the game, but not an easy game as you can see. But uh, he enjoys it. So, Alright, so Rice, Lynn, and Evans in the, in the outfield. Lynn and Evans are excellent range fielders with excellent arms, especially Evans. Commit not that many errors, but a few. And Jim Rice will commit even fewer errors, but has only average range. He won't get to as many as they do. In the infield today, it's going to be Duffy, Burleson, Remy, and Yastrzemski left to right. Duffy's playing in the game for Hobson. He's got average range with an E20. Definitely a lot better than Hobson's E53. So he'll commit a lot fewer errors than Hobson, and he'll get to a few more balls than he will. Burleson, the shortstop, is a 1E17, so he's excellent range. And commit a few errors. Remy is 16 out of 13. So Remy is a 2E16, which is above average range, and he made a few errors on, on occasion. And Yastrzemski is a above average with, he'll commit 11 errors in a course of a 162 game season. So behind the plate, Fisk, excellent range, above average arm. And Ripley is average range and will not but won't not, will not commit any errors one of his few um, good points so he'll make most of his range plays he's arrow wise so billy smith up now hitting 296 with two homers and four runs batted in so here's the wind up and the pitch it's gonna be off a ripley six bomb so that's a good thing for the red sox However, they do find that single column there. <laughs> as a, 1 to 14 is a single, and that split is an 8. 
So he reaches first. And a one-out single. And next up is Larry Harlow. Sitting 323 with three homers and 17 runs that in. The Orioles offensively seem to be off to a good start. And it's a three, which is good. And it's going to be a foul out. Fisk is under it. Grabs it for the out. Alright, so two down now. Bring up Ken Singleton, who's hitting 298 with three homers and 14 runs about in. The Orioles offensively seem to be doing it. And it's going to be a flip his five call. It's going to be a fly ball to center. And it should make the play on this. And he does. And that'll be it for the O's in the first. So after one full inning, no score. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got to go check on some something going on down in the stands. The ambulance is there. I can make sure everything's okay. He's a part-time paramedic in his... He's not announcing baseball games. So he's got to go check it out, make sure everything's all right. Sure, he'll be back shortly. So, all right, Carl Yastrzemski up now. It'll be Yastrzemski, Fisk, and Lynn for the Sox here in the second. Yastrzemski is hitting 278 with three homers and 13 runs batted in. And Yastrzemski is going to get his pitch here. The question is, can he hit it? And he can. He makes contact, but ends up grounding out the third. And the Senseis will make the play to. Over to Murray for the first out of the inning. So he got his pitch, but just mishit it a little bit. The next up will be Carlton Fisk. Up, average up to 302 with three homers and 13 runs batted in. And it's going to be off of Flanagan's four column. And it'll be a strikeout. So just inside, but it hits the corner. Fist out. The umpire said he went around on it too. Didn't look like he did from up here, but the umpire says he did. So two outs now for Fred Lynn. Looks like he's been on a tear recently, hitting 313 with nine homers and to lead the team. 24 runs batted in. He's homered in the last two games. So in order for him to homer off of his card, he'll need a 2 4 and a 1 15 split or a 211 or 212 with a 1 and 2 split. Now playing against card, he can get a 5 10 with a 10 on the D20. So Flanagan lets up his share of home runs. So we'll see what happens. And we're not going to get our home runners off. It's Lynn's one column. Chance of a walk in a skinny single. Instead, we'll get the strikeout. Swing and a miss. Big cut there by Lynn. Sox go in order in the second. So we head to the bottom of the second with no score. So Ripley will face Murray, May, and DeSenseis here in the bottom of the second. Eddie Murray's been struggling so far, hitting just 192 with three homers and nine runs batted in. And now he's going to be off the, rip the column. We don't want to be on a Ripley's card. It's four column. And he'll stroke a double down the Right field line, past the dive of Yastrzemski, into the corner, Evans is up with it. But not before Murray trots in with a leadoff double. Good start in the 0-second. That'll bring up Lee May, hitting 222 with two homers and eight runs batted in. Ripley looks in for the sign, gives the runner a look. Here's the windup in the pitch. It's going to be off of Lee's two column. And he strikes him out swinging. So Murray was way out in front of that one. Anticipated a fastball and got a breaking ball. Deceived by Ripley's big motion on that, on his windup. So to bring up Doug DeSensei is now hitting 256 with two homers and 10 runs batted in. So lined up in the pitch. There's one column. The ground ball to short. Russell looks to run it back and throws over to Yastrzemski for the second out. Two down now. 
Fioros again in the board. He'll be up to Rick Dempsey. 294 with a home run, eight runs batted in. Somewhere he'll get a little extra lead now, two outs. Dempsey looks in for the sign. He has to wind up in the pitch. And Rick looks in for the sign. This gives it. So wind up in the pitch. Oh, it's going to be off of Ripley's four column, which is not where we want to be. Unless it's a 4-8 or 4-9 or a 4-2. Or 10 or 11 wouldn't be bad either. And it is going to be a 4-5, and it's going to be a double to center field. That'll get the run home. Goes all the way to the wall. And Dempsey is in there with an RBI double. So the O's strike first. It's 1-0 in the bottom of the second. That'll bring up light hitting Mark Belanger, hitting 250 with 10 runs batted in. RBI opportunity here. And he's got the six column, which is where we want it to be for Ripley. And it's going to be a fly ball to center. Wind should handle this one. And he does for the final out of the inning. But the O's get on the board first on the RBI double by Dempsey. Lead at one nothing. So Flanagan got himself a small lead now. It'll be the bottom third of the order for the Sox in here in the third, and the yeah, top of the third. It'll be Hobson, Evans, and Duffy. Hobson's hitting 282 with four homers and 17 runs batted in. Duffy Dempsey's four column, and Flanagan's four column. It's going to be a single. One to eight would have been a single, and you get a six. Hobson is on with a leadoff single, so tying run is on board with Dwight Evans. Lee Pee homer in his last two games, too. These were both solo home runs, but homers nonetheless. So he's hitting 229 with four homers and 11 runs batted in. Had been struggling up until the last two games, but it started to come a bit alive. Let's see what he can do here. He's going to be off playing in six column, which is his tough column here. Just misses that single. It's going to be a fly ball to left. So Hobson will have, trots his way, makes his way back to first. Check out some scores around the league. Cleveland leads Seattle 1-0. Texas and Milwaukee are knotted at 3. Alexander and Sorensen dueling. Oakland and Toronto are scoreless. Minnesota and Chicago are tied at 2. And here in Baltimore, it's the Orioles 1 and the Red Sox nothing. One out and one on first for Frank Duffy. Playing third base today. He's two for five. And two runs batted in. Playing again, looks in the sign from Dempsey. Gets what he wants. Looks the runner back. He does the wind up in the pitch. And Duffy's best column here. Six column. It's three column, sorry. He'll lace a single just past the dive of the Sensei's. So we we'll run on first and second with one down. So the Red Sox have something going here. Top of the third. Brings the top of the order, Burleson. He struck out his first time up. Burleson looks in. Looks in to Flanagan. Tries to give him the evil eye. Flanagan ignores it. Puts up a sign. Here's the line to pin the pitch. It's going to be a ground ball. Double play possibility. The sense is grabs it over to second for one. Back to first. Double play. So, Burleson grounds into a 5-4-3 double play. And that'll be it for the Red Sox. In the third. So we head to the bottom of the third. With the Orioles maintaining 1-0 lead. Ripley will face the top of the order. And Bumry, Smith, and Harlow. Bumry grounded out his first time up. So we have pop up third base. Duffy is under it. And makes it easy out there. Billy Smith, the second baseman up now. He singled his first time up. Gonna be off of his one column, which is his kind of, doesn't say it, but that's definitely his pitch call. So let's see what he can do with it. It's going to be a single. Just past the dive of Yastrzemski. Just hopped over his glove. 
Evans grabs it, throws it in, holding Smith at first with a single, so good job by White Evans in right field, holding Smith to a single. Bring up Larry Harlow, fouled out and hit the fist his first time up. He's going to get his pitch here. And he's going to get just under it and flies out to right. Two down now. Kent Singleton will fly out his first time up. If he gets the sign, makes the runner back. Here's the line to bend the pitch. Off to six column, which is where we want to be. And it's going to be a fly ball to left, opposite field. So a one to six will be a hit. Anything else will be most likely an out. For Rice, he's got a three range. And looks like he's going to make the play. Yes, Rice will hold on to it and make the play. Rainbow shot. Had him play perfectly there. So that'll do it for the O's in the second. Headed to the top of the fourth with Baltimore one and Boston nothing. See if the Red Sox can get it going. They had an opportunity last inning but weren't able to cash in. The Rem Dog will lead it off. He flew out his first time up. Two call. And it's going to be a strike three call. Curveball that broke back over. So number four on the day for Flanagan. 28 on strikeouts on the year. Brings up Jim Rice with a one down. He popped out his first time up. And he'll pop out again to shortstop. Flanders over and makes the catch. Two down now. And the base is empty for Yastrzemski. Rounded out his first time up. And he just gets himself a single. He got one to 16 and he got a 16. So just past the dive of Belanger and Smith. Got in between them. Shemp's going to be on with a two out single. Gonna bring up Fisk who struck out his first time up. And Fisk is going to get his pitch, see what he can do with it. And he's going to lace a double to between Singleton and Bummery. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Are they going to send Yastrzemski? No, they're going to hold him at third. Doesn't have the legs he used to. So runners on second and third with two down for Freddie Lynn. So an RBI opportunity here. He's been clutch lately in these situations. See what he can do here. Struck out his first time up. And it's going to be in the dirt. Bounces away. Yastrzemski will score. And Fisk moves up to third. So, Yaz scores on the wild pitch by Flanagan, and the Red Sox tie the game at one. Strode is still not back yet from his checking out what's going on in the stands there. Must be something kind of important. See, it's not returned yet. So, Lynn gets back into the box. Now with a runner on third and two down. One run in. Oh, I almost thought that was a home run, but I hit, misclicked it there. Going to pop out the first. Murray's under and makes the catch. So the Red Sox do tie the game on a wild pitch by Flanagan. And the game will be tied. It's tied at one. All right, Eddie Murray doubled his first time up. We'll lead it off for the O's here in the bottom of the fourth. So now for the six column. He's been staying in that six column rather consistently, which is good for Ripley. Keeping the... So it's a to Remy. So anything but a one or a two will be a successful range check. Looks like he's going to get it all right. Handles it cleanly. He'll throw it over to Yastrzemski. Got one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Right, that'll bring up Lee May, who's 0 for 1. Struck out his first time up. Gonna be a ground ball to Duffy. High hopper. Duffy snatches it in the third hop and overhands one 
the first for the second out of the inning. Two up and two down in the Orioles' fourth. Brings up Doug DeSense, who grounded out his first time up. And you draw a two out walk. First walk of the day given up by Ripley. Goes up to 61 pitches now. Here in the fourth. Brings up Dempsey, who doubled, got an RBI double his, knocking the only Oriole run so far. Get his pitch too as on Ripley's four column. See what he can do with it. Ground ball to short, so Brussel should handle this one. And he will. Throws it over to short way to Remy. And he's out in the field of choice, and that'll do it for the Orioles in the fourth. So we head to the top of the fifth. Game is tied at one. Hobson singled his first time up. He's going to get a good pitch to hit here. Oh, he lays off of it. It's just a bit low on that one. And probably gives him the call. He trots the first with a leadoff walk. So that'll bring Dwight Evans. Bunting skill. Hey, he's at a bunting A. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna surprise him and go for the bunt. Well, the corners are in. And Evans has been struggling a bit, even though he's woken up a little bit in the last couple games. But I think we're gonna try to grab the lead here. So we're gonna go for a bunt. This is a bunter. Squares the bunt. They would probably get the sure out at first as it's only a 50% chance. So. I would assume they would do that. That's I don't know why it's. Let's check our options here. Oh, Boston's name is better. That's strange. Should be the other way around. <laughs> we haven't had to make any changes yet, so. so Alright, so Hobson's in scoring position. I'm sure the Orioles fans will protest that one. They probably would have probably tried for a second, but I'm sure that Earl Weaver would have probably gone and got the shore out there, although you never know. So anyway, Frank Duffy up now, late hitting Duffy. Round ball to second. So it's a two range, so one and two will be a hit. And he also be a get the get it. He's up with it. Over to first. Just some time. So Hobson move over to third. Now with two down. Cleveland's in front of Seattle, three to nothing. Texas and Milwaukee are tied at three. Oliver hit his fourth home run for Texas. Oakland is edging Toronto, one nothing, and Minnesota and Chicago are deadlocked at four. Erickson battling Wortham. It's going to be up a three column. The ground ball back to the pitcher. Flanagan grabs it over to first in time, one three. And the Red Sox do not score, so that play did not come into effect. Either way, so now we are managing the Red Sox and the uh, computer is managing the Orioles. Although it didn't really affect it because we didn't make any changes early on in the game, thankfully. So, all right, so uh, Mark Belangelo will lead it off. He flied out his first time up. Ripley pitching a fine game into the fifth there. Only allowing one run on four hits. Uh, both teams have one run on four hits and no errors. Big ground ball to third. I don't have to cringe now as Duffy is a good fielder. He should make the play here. And ooh, he does though. That was a close one there. Bobbles a little bit, but comes up with it and fires Hugh Stremski for the out. 
So one down. The bump for El Bumry. Grounded out in the first and popped out in the third. And he'll pop out the first this time. Stremski's under it, makes the catch for the second out. Billy Smith up now, two for two on the day. Has himself a couple of singles. And he's going to get a chance for another hit here. Steady draws a walk. Change up low. So two old base runner. Brings up Larry Harlow, who fouled out and flied out. Smith gets his lead. Not get a good lead, though. Fly ball down the right field line, and Evans jumps and get, catches it at the wall. So a great leaping catch at the wall by Dwight Evans, robbing... Who is that? <laughs> uh, Harlow of a home run. And that'll end the inning. So excellent play, defensive play by Evans. That'll do it for Baltimore. That would have been a three-run lead. I mean, a three-to-one lead, but instead it's a long out. So hopefully that'll spark the Red Sox here. And Jerry Remy will lead it off here in the top of the sixth. Wide out in the first, and struck out in the fourth. You know, draw a leadoff walk here. Do a little hit and run with Rice. No, we do. Nice D hit and run, so we're not going to hit and run. Again. Try to steal with Lammy, but let's see what happens here. Let's try to steal. Might not be able to even get the jump. So, save chance 1 to 13. Yeah, we're not going to try that. Power of Jim Rice. The Rice is up now. He's 0 for 2. Popped out both times. Short both times. And good thing we didn't, as he's going to hit one over Barmy's head all the way to the wall. I'm going to send Remy 85% chance. And hold Rice. And Remy scores all the way from first. And double by Rice. An RBI double by Jim Rice. Red Sox take the lead 2-1. to one. So Kai Strzepski up now. Rice in scoring position. Rounded out in the second. And singled in the fourth. Now it's Young. He has his walk column. No draw the walk. So Runs on first and second. Nobody out for Colin Fisk. Struck out in the second. And doubled in the fourth. And he'll double again. This one will get just by Bummery. Leaps, but he can't get it. Rice will come around the score. He's going to hold Kostremski. Hold the legs there. Don't want to risk it. So, another run in. It's a 3 to 1 lead for the Red Sox. So, that catch by Evans proved to be big and sparked the Red Sox offense. As they've gotten three straight hits. Run is on second and third, and they'll be out for Freddie Lynn. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Struck out in the second, popped out in the fourth. Another RBI opportunity for Lynn. It's going to be ground ball back to the pitcher. Looks like he's going to handle it. He does. Holds the runners. I believe. Hold the runner. And then he's retired at first for the first out of the inning. Rich Hobson gets an opportunity now. Singled in the third and walked in the fifth. The ground ball to third. The sensei dives to his right, takes out one hop, fires to first. And the runners hold. White Evans now. Wide out in the third and sacrificed 
find in the fifth. We're gonna walk in Evans intentionally. That will load the bases for Frank Duffy. It's one for two in the day, singled and rounded out. <sighs> I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna pinch hit and bring in Brohammer afterwards. I think we're gonna bring in, we're gonna bring in Carbo. Possibly. Let's see. Definitely not gonna bring in Bob Bailey. We're gonna bring in four righties. We're gonna bring in Carbo and Chip for Duffy. So Bernie Carbo comes in before he gets traded off to Cleveland. <laughs> and um, so he comes in with the bases loaded. We definitely want to be on his. Oh, he didn't hit that many home runs. You want to get his one column though. Oh, the start recording button instead of the uh, dice button. Dice roll. So here we go. It's going to be off of this Flanagan's five column. It's going to be a ground ball at the short. Flanagan just should handle this one. It should do it for the Red Sox. He does. And Blaine was able to handle it. Throws the first, and Gatto get him. So scored a 6-3, but Boston scores two. And after five and a half, lead it three to one. We're gonna bring in Brohammer. That's a replacement for Carbo. Oh, got to uh, put it right here. Gonna tell him what position it is. All right, so Jack Brohammer, she's a bit better than Duffy. Um, Arrow-wise, she's at E13 as compared to Duffy's 320. Same range, though, so a little bit of an upgrade. So, all right, Ken Singleton up now with the Orioles down by two here in the bottom of the sixth. Ripley's still out there. It's going to be a leadoff single. Ooh, Eddie Murray up now. There is action in the Red Sox bullpen. I think we're going to bring in... Eddie Murray's a switch hitter. I think I'd still rather have him on the right side of the plate. I remember, right? Let's check his card. So versus lefties. There's a little bit of power in that four column. But against righties, he's, I think he's worse against righties. So I think we're going to bring in... We're gonna bring in Bergmeier. Switch around, bat from the other side of the plate where it's a little bit less power. At least in 1978. Overall in his career, I think he was pretty even, both power-wise and it looked like slightly better uh, against righties. We're gonna go with the percentages here. Bergmeier, that'll be it for Ripley. Pitches. Five plus innings. Wow, I think just one run responsible for the base runner. He's responsible for Singleton at first. So Bergmeier comes to the plate, into uh, up to the mound. He is a no record with a 3.18 ERA, 11 hits in 11 innings, four walks and three strikeouts. So let's see what you can do here. Oh, it's going to be off that. Bergmeier's five column. <laughs> that did not help as he doubles down the left field line. Gonna be a double anyway, so I think we're gonna try to throw for the lead runner. We get a 40% chance of getting him, so we're gonna we're gonna go for it. I wish it was Evans throwing, but we're gonna go for it. And Singleton is out coming home, so Jim Rice throws him out with a bullet to Fisk, applies the tag. And 
That'll Red Sox maintain a three to one lead. So Murray holds at second. We may up now. Struck out and grounded out. Oh, we should have changed Bergmeyer, but he's gonna fly out to what happened there. Rice is racing back at the wall. And Rice takes it in at the wall. Wow. Oh, we're definitely taking uh, Bergmeyer out now. <laughs> we left him in one too long there. Alright, so the question is who do we want to bring in against the Senseis, which is a Zorizo. He's a righty, I believe. Yeah, he's a righty. He's got a plus one against the lefty, so we're going to bring in a righty. We're going to bring in... Six innings. Still early yet. For... I guess we're going to bring in Drago. So Dick Drago comes in. Always scary. 3-1 and one record, though. 235 ERA. 15 innings pitch. Six hits allowed. Six walks is what scares me there. Nine strikeouts and three home runs allowed also let up three home runs in 15 minutes. so he's susceptible to the wall to the long ball and, but we get the right column there the sixth column and it's gonna be a ground ball to Remy he'll throw over to Yastrzemski and that'll do it so the Orioles are unable to score and despite and get their uh, rice throws out and Ripken trying to score not Ripken but uh Whoever that was running. <laughs> Can't remember. Uh, but Rick and the coach sent them. I mean the manager. So Rick Burleson up now. Hope for three on the day. So it'll be Bur top of the order. Burleson, Remy, and Rice against Flanagan is back out there. Maybe a ground ball at the second. Smith is up with it. Looks like he's going to be up with it. He'll throw over to Murray for the first out. So one down in the Orioles seventh. Brings up Jerry Remy. And he'll fly out to Harlow for the second out. So Jim Rice, who made an excellent play, gunning down the runner at home. One for three with a double. RBI double. And he'll strike out. That one in the dirt. Curve in the dirt. So that fold in there. Over anxious. Sorry, right, trivia question. Who are the only 20 game winners in National League in 1979? And what else did they have in common? I have no idea. I'm going to say Rick Russell and Phil Necro. And I'm going to put they both pitch for last place teams. That's my guess. Phil Necro and Rick Russell both pitch for last place teams. All right. So final Jeopardy put in locking your answers. Joe and Phil Necro and they were brothers. Okay. So I was half right but for the wrong reason. So Phil Necro and Joe Necro both won 20 games. Phil 21 and 20 for Atlanta and Joe 21 and 11 for the Houston. All right. So Rick Dempsey will lead it off. One for two. Double RB, RBI double in the second off of Ripley. And a force play in the fourth. Drago back out on the mound. Pat Kelly's going to pinch hit for Dempsey. Pat Kelly's hitting 308 with a home run, two runs batted in, and 13 at bats. Lefty is in the box. This will be a ground ball to Burleson. He should make this play. And he does. So one down in the Oriole seven. Bring up Belanger, who's 0 for 2, flied out and grounded out. Terry Crowley's going to pinch hit. Crowley's hitting 571, so 4 for 7. So you have to, Crowley's 2 column, 
and continues his hot hitting. As he'll be five for eight now. So a one out single, tying run comes to the plate in Al Bumry. Lefty is 0 for three on the day. And he'll single up the middle. I think that's going to be it for Drago. <sighs> Who do we bring in now here? Bottom of the seventh. Billy Smith up now, who is a switch hitter. Let's we check and see how he does against. Makes much of a difference here. Yeah, it's danger from either side could be. I mean, it's gonna matter. As he's three righties, so he's slightly better against righties, but now we'll even drag it one more batter. Oh, he finds that single. <laughs> so one run will come in, Crowley will come in, and Lynn's throw to third is late, and run is at the corners now, for Larry Harlow, he's a lefty, and I think we're going to bring in Campbell, Campbell's very good against lefty, so hopefully we can get it on his card, so Bill Campbell's going to come in. Good card against the lefties overall. Alright, so Harlow steps in, the runners at the corners, infield playing in. Corners are playing in. And Smith is gonna. Oh! And, he sh and Campbell picks off Smith at first. So big out there. He got a little too far off the bag. Barmy holds at third. So two down now, so the Red Sox infield can play back. Oh, now we didn't want to be in that call. Oh, well, we get the right in as he pops out to Remy to end the inning. So if the Orioles do score a one, and after seven full, it's a 3 2 Red Sox lead. The Red Sox need to add some insurance. Attendance announced 11,152. So Baltimore makes a couple defensive changes. Skaggs will bat eighth and play catcher. And Garcia will bat ninth and play shortstop. So Kiko Garcia will be the new shortstop. He's a three range, average range, but will commit a lot of errors. So he's a defensive liability, unlike Belanger. So, and Skaggs is three with an E8 and has an average arm. So, all right, so definitely a downgrade for defensively for the Orioles, so hopefully the Red Sox can take advantage of that. So Yastrzemski will lead it off. One for three with a single. And unable to get that skinny single, and he lines out back to the pitcher. Uh, so it looks like it hit the ground, so one three. So that'll bring up Fisk, who's Two for three with a couple of doubles and an RBI. And he will pop out to Smith for the second out. So two up and two down for the Sox eighth. Freddie Lynn up now. It's 0 for 3 on the day. Make that 0 for 4 as he pops out the third. And that'll be it in the Red Sox 8. So we head to the bottom of the 8th. The Red Sox clean to a one-run lead. Boston is 5-4 and four in one-run games. And Baltimore has a 2-3 and three record in one-run games. Go Campbell. We're well, at least going to let him pitch the singleton, I think. Ugh. No draw a lead off walk. That's the walk call, definitely, if I've ever seen one. So lead off runner on for Eddie Murray. And we're definitely going to take out Campbell now. Oh boy. We're going to bring in Bob Stanley. We're going to bring in Jim Wright, but 
we got to bring in Bob Stanley. Steamer Stanley comes in. Nobody out and tying run at first for Eddie Dangerous Eddie Murray. Two, he's two for three in the day with a couple of doubles. And he'll single to right. So runners singles and stops at second. So runners on first and second for Lee May. Hope for three on the day. Oof. And he'll single. So Stanley comes in and gives up two quick singles. That'll load the bases. Nobody out still. Infield playing in. For Doug DeSense as he's 0 for 2 with a walk. It's going to be a line out to Rice. Now they're going to send Singleton. No, they're not. <laughs> as, a, as Rice gunned out the last runner, so you're going to be a little conservative. So one down now. Infield still playing in. Dave Skaggs, the catcher, comes in hitting 278 with two runs batted in. 18 at bats. It's going to pop out the third, so Broham will make that catch. So the Red Sox one out of getting out of this. Infield fly rule was called on that one. So Kiko Garcia would come in for Belandre last inning defensively. He's hitting 215 at bats, so three for 15. Stanley Canoe. Stanley looks in for the sign from Fisk. Base is loaded. Here's the line to pin the pitch. There's going to be a pinch hitter. Rich Dower is going to come in and hit for Garcia. So Dower is hitting 290 with six runs batted in. So a bit of a better hitter here. Ooh. Ah, and he comes through in the clutch. Single to right. Robert can senior reading the runner home, so one run comes in and we have a tie ball game. Oh wait, actually we're gonna throw home. We're gonna attempt to see if Rice can be two for two throwing him out. That would be awesome. 70% chance. We're gonna throw. And Murray is out! Rice guns him down. So Jim Rice guns down his second runner. I think it was the yeah. Second runner of the day, and the Red Sox. But the Orioles tie it up at three, though, so. What happened there? Yeah, so they tied it up, but the lead, they're not able to take the lead. So Rice guns him out. So a big play by Jim Rice there. See if the Red Sox can get that run back here in the top of the ninth. At least one. It'll be Hobson, who's one for two with a walk. So Flanagan back out there again. And he gets a skinny single up the middle. So Hobson is on with a leadoff single. He'll be being held. So Evans up now, 0 for 1. He'll be bunting here. He's got a bunt. He's got a bunt in now. So Evans is going to square around the bunt off Flanagan. Delivers the pitch. Gags charge. He picks up the bunt. Fires the first in time. Successful sacrifice for Evans and uh, go ahead runs in scoring position now. For Jack Brohammer, who came on to, to play the defense for uh, Duffy, who was pinch hit for. So Frank, Jack Brohammer up now. Clutch situation. Flanagan still out there. Skaggs goes in and talks to him. Brohammer gets a sign. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Ground ball to third. Oh, I wish it was a ground ball to short, but it's a ground ball to third. Oh, I was hoping that would hit that single. And it looks like Sensei is going to make the play. Look, he's going to look Hobson back to second. So it'll be up to Rick Burleson, who's 0 for 4 on the day. Struck out in the first and grounded out his next three times up. So he's due. Here's the wind up in the pitch. It's going to pop out to short. And that's going to do it for the Red Sox in the top of the ninth. So they do not score. 
Mr. Miller is here now, so we'll be right back. All right, Mr. Brody is back. He takes his co-host seat there. Told him it was a 3-3 ball game, and he's back from the stands after checking out the incident that was in the stands, but everything's okay. Mr. Miller's here in the background, providing us with any uh, additional information as needed. And everyone, uh, the interns as well. And the interns, yep. One for Yale. Okay. Alrighty. So, Bummery steps. It'll be Bummery, Smith, and Harlow. Top of the order for the Orioles here in the bottom of the ninth. Tied at three. Orioles tied at last inning. So, Stanley looks in for the sign. Here's the wind up in the pitch. And just misses a single as Remy's able to get to that one. Jerry Remy catches the soft line drive for the first out of the inning. Billy Smith up now. He's had a hot day. Three for three. Three singles and a walk and an RBI. Stanley looks in for the sign from Fisk. Gets what he wants. He has a wind up in the pitch. And this one will be popped up to Yastrzemski. He'll make the catch for the second out. That'll bring up Larry Harlow, who's 0 for 4 in the day. However, Stanley gives up a single up the middle. So that'll bring up Ken Singleton, who's 1 for 3 of the run scored. Stanley looks the runner back. So the sign, fires it in. He has a wind up in the pitch. So we ground ball back to Stanley. He's a above average range. Hopefully he can get this and get out of this inning. And looks like he's gonna handle it. And the throw is looks like the throw is good over to Stremsky. And we head to extra innings. The score tied at three. Flanagan's still out there for the tenth inning. So Flanagan's pitched nine innings and it's gonna be out there for a tenth. We have Jerry Remy be up first. He's 0 for 3 with a run scored. And he'll strike out Swain. Flanagan still looks as strong as, he, as ever. But he's going to have to face the dangerous Jim Rice. He's 1 for 4 with a double. So wind up in the pitch. Ooh, and it's going to be off of Rice's 1 column, which is where we want to be. Gets his pitch. Let's see what he does with it. Ah, he lines out the third, so he just missed that one. Had a good chance of a home run on that column. So two down for Kyle Yastrzemski. He's one for three with a run scored. And he'll strike out on the curveball. Misses it by a mile. Bottom dropped out of that one. So we head to the bottom of the 10th inning with the Red Sox and the Orioles tied at three. Lead it off will be the dangerous... Eddie Murray, who's 3 for 4 on the day with a couple of doubles. He singled against Stanley his last time up. And this time he'll line out to Remy. So he gets him this time. So that brings up Lee May. Who's 1 for 4 on the day. Singled his last time up off Stanley. Stanley's ERA is down to 1.08 on the season. Fly out to Rice. That'll be the second out. And that'll bring up Doug DeSenses, who's 0 for 3 with a walk. And he will fly out to Evans. We'll make the catch to retire the side. So we head to the 11th inning with the score still tied at 3. It'll be Fisk, Lynn, and Hobson up for the Red Sox. And Mike Flanagan is still out there. Yeah, Baltimore is managed by the computer, so I don't know why he's still out there, but he is. He's throwing 147 pitches, but he's still out there. Cal Ripken Sr. is going, I don't know, going old school here. And he's going to pop out the short. And Smith will make the catch. Mr. Brody adjusts himself in the co-host seat. 
been a long game for Mr. Brody too. Fred Lynn in there now, 0 for 4. He has homered in the last two games, including a grand slam in the last game. And five RBIs in the last game. So let's see if he can make it three straight games. That would be nice. He's going to be after Flanagan's five call. And checks his swing. Oh, the appeal. And Ling swung at strike three. So two down now. For Chobson. Two for three on the day with a walk. Got a couple of singles. And he'll let a fly ball to left. Singleton is under it and he makes the catch. So we head to the bottom of the 11th. Baltimore's out hit the Red Sox 13 to 7, but the score is still tied at 3. So Dave Skaggs, who came in, came in for Dempsey. He up to the plate. He's 0 for 1. And, but he'll get a leadoff single here up the middle, so the winning run is on base now for the Orioles. Brings up Rich Dower, who's 1 for 1 with a RBI. So, alright. So we have some information from Mr. Uh, Miller after this. However, it's maybe moot as it's going to be a double for Rich Dower and that. Ooh, they're going to hold Skaggs at third though. So runners on second and third, the winning run 90 feet away. And on this day, on August 3rd, 1978. So in this in this game, well not in this game, but on this date, August 3rd, not this actual game. Switch hitting Eddie Murray, homered twice. Actually, homered from both sides of the plate. He homered twice, one from each side of the plate. And that was Mr. Miller, who saw it on in the newspaper at his place of employment, his other place of employment. So thank you, Mr. Miller, for that. Mr. Brody is agreeing with it. So all right, so. Red Sox are in danger here, so the infield's got to play in. The outfield's going to play in. And the Orioles with the winning run here at third base. Dave Skaggs. So Al Barmery. So Fisk goes out to have a conference. Zimmer is out there too. Half the infield's out there, Burleson and Remy. So here we go. Oh, and this looks like the game's going to be all over here, possibly. And it's going to be a single up the middle, and the Orioles have a walk-off winner. On a game-winning RBI by L. Barmery. So the hitting star is Eddie Murray, 3 for 5. And that'll wrap things up as Bob Stanley is the loser. The Red Sox lose a tough one here. They're leading 3 to 1 at one point. So, all right, so let's check the box score. So Mike Flanagan goes the distance, pitches 11 innings, giving up 7 hits, 3 runs, all of them earned, 4 walks, and 8 strikeouts. The RA gets lowered to 3.77. Alan Ripley goes 5 innings, pitched a great game, only allowed 5 hits with only 1 run, 2 walks, and a strikeout. Bergmeier and Drago both get their hold, and Campbell all get holds. However, Bob Stanley gets a blown save, his first. And he gets the loss. So Bob Stanley is true to form as we remember him. Blows the save and gets the loss. Seven hits and three innings pitched. So, ouch. So Eddie Murray, definitely a hitting star. Three for five. Looks like Billy Smith was three for four. Looks like the RBIs were passed around, scattered around. Rich Dower, two for two with an RBI. But Al Barmery gets the game-winning RBI there, two for six. Uh, let's see here. Colin Fist, two for five with an RBI. And Rice was one for five with an RBI. Not much going on with the Red Sox offense. Butch Hobson, two for four. So the Red Sox fall to the Orioles in 11. And they have a record of 19 and 11 now. As the Orioles even their record at 13 and 13. So that'll be it from Higher Ground Gaming. This has been Eric and his co-host, Mr. Brody. We'll see you in the next 1978 Red Sox replay when the Red Sox play game two and try to go for a split against the Baltimore Orioles. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye.